स्वूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामीनारायण भगवान नी जय ठाकुर जी महाराज नी जय सुप्रीम ओम माइडी beloved Gansham Maharaj, Thakurji Maharaj, the path maker toward liberation, our utmost dear Puja Guruji, <coughs> Puja Santo and all of you, Bala Bhakto, Jai Swami Narayan. <coughs> Ever since Bhagwan Swami Narayan decided to come on this earth from his Akshradham, he has always brought with him his agents or associates. Before Bhagwan came down from Akshadam, he had a meeting there with his elite most santos, Sadguru Sri Muktanan Swami, Sadguru Sri Gopan Swami, Sadguru Sri Brahmanan Swami, Nityanan Swami, Shukanan Swami, Premanan Swami, Nishkuran Swami, so on and so forth. And there, Maharaj said that I would like to come on this earth, this very universe, this very earth, I would like to go there and liberate souls. Will you all come with me? And all of these humble Anadi Mukto folded their hands, <coughs> folded their hands, and they said, Of course, Maharaj, without a doubt. We will come with you. And from that sankalp or thought, Maharaj took birth here on this earth 239 years ago along with his Anadi Mukto. As we all know, our Adi Guru, Sadguru Sri Muktanan Swami, his life, his character, his virtues were completely beyond any other sadhu and was of the most highest of caliber. But alongside Muktanan Swami, Maharaj also kept another Sadguru by the name of Sadguru Sri Gopan Swami, Yogi Raj. Sadguru Sri Gopan Swami is very famous in the Swami Narayan Sampraday, just like how Sadguru Sri Muktanan Swami is. And from that very point, Sadhguru Sri Gopan Swami, we want to discuss and reflect a little bit on his life and some of the prasangs that he ex experienced and also had others experience. Nonetheless, his life biography. Because this coming Saturday, February 20th, it is actually Sadhguru Sri Gopan Swami's birthday. So, I would like to help all of you reflect on how great of a sadhu Sadhguru Sri Gopan Swami is. And just by merely attaining even 1% of his virtues and qualities, we'd be very fortunate to attain Maharaj's Rajipo. So without further ado, I'd like to read and we'll discuss a little bit regarding the life of Sadhguru Sri Gopan Swami. Swami Narayan Hare. Gopan Swami was born in a Brahman family in Todla, a village in North Gujarat, on Mahashud 8th, Samat 1837, Christ's era, which is 1781. He was named Kushal Bhatt. At the age of four, Kushal learned Sanskrit from his father Motiram. Now that very statement right there, that word in the sentence, there's two things that pop out. Age of four and learn Sanskrit. Now, 
Sanskrit is such a vast language that by experiencing a little bit here, um, even in Loyada Menje and other centers, by the Agna of Puja Guruji, our dear Santos are actually studying in the language of Sanskrit. And just a little bit of discussion and asking how the language is. Santos say that one word actually has 50 different meanings and actually it is very, very difficult as you go deeper and deeper inside. Such a difficult language yet by the Agna of Puja Guruji, our Santos are learning. But even till now, it takes approximately seven years to eight years to get a degree in Sanskrit as a Sastri. But Kushal Bhatt mastered Sanskrit and learned it at the age of four, showing that his level, his brilliance was of a different kind. Any Anadi Mukto or Mukto that come on this earth, they always have different characteristics and virtues, which really, you can say, display them out of the crowd. They're very highlighted because of such kind of virtues. And such kind of virtues are not found everywhere. But here, going back to our topic, Sadhguru Sri Gopan Swami had such kind of virtues. And from there, Swami himself was very, very learned in the language of Sanskrit. Kushal Bhatt then studied the Vedas, astrology, astronomy, nyay meaning logic, and vyakran meaning grammar from a pandit. Now, from there, all of these different various subjects were studied by Kushal, Kushal Bhatt at a very young age, showing that his brilliance was beyond imagination. Moving on. Prakashish Kushal mastered Ashtang Yoga and often meditated in a Shiva Mandir nearby. I can say for a doubt, without a doubt, that <clears throat> such kind of, you can say, learning languages and all these different subjects, of the Vedas, astro uh, astro astronomy, astrology, astronomy, Nyai, and Vyakana, all these different kinds of subjects and yoga and stuff, this was just a you can say a, a role play by made by Goparan Swami. And here Muktanan here Maharaj when he came on this earth, Muktanan Swami, Goparan Swami and other Sadguru Santos, they also it was just a big drama. Just like how even currently here in the United States in Broadway uh, there is dramas and skits that are performed in a similar way. In this very life of Goparan Swami, it was a drama and it was uh, pretty much just playing a role in how, uh, you know, he was showing different, different, various kinds of brilliance, but it was all a show, a display. Later, after completing his own studies, he set up, he set up a school in Torla and taught the village children. This is at a very young age, I want to say below the age of 15. Not satisfied with orthodox methods of teaching, he also taught the children to sing bhajans, extolling Bhagwan's glory. The children often attained samadhi, meaning divine trance, due to Kushal's supernatural influence. He also possessed miraculous yogic powers. At home, in secrecy, he often summoned and played with the murti of Shri Krishna, from the famous ancient mandir of Shamlaji, situated in a few mile from a few miles from Todla. Once the priest opened the mandir slightly early, then usual and found that then usual and found the murti missing from the altar. The whole murti was missing from the altar. Just like imagine that we open up the mandir here and the, when the curtains open Pirda Gansha Maharaj is missing from the whole Siyasan. That's what the priest experienced in this very event. Perplexed, he went to inform the villagers. 
When they arrived, they discovered the murti in its usual position, undisturbed except for a missing anklet and a silk garment. The people naturally blamed the priests. Obviously, the priest who uh, took the anklet and the silk garment, that's what they said. They were, they were about to flog him when they heard a mysterious voice. The priest is not to blame. I play with Kushal Bhatt every day. But today the priest opened the mandir early than usual and in a hurry to reach here, I left my garment and the anklet on the way. Go and search there. The listeners were stunned. They retracted the path of Kushal's house and found the two items and bowed down to the young Kushal. This is what happened. Bhagwan himself actually, through his voice, acknowledged that I played with Kushal and due to the priest opening the, up the temple early, um, I was in a hurry to get back. And the Murti left two things behind. So this shows that Kushal's elevated spiritual state and his affection for Bhagwan was divine and beyond this world. Nonetheless, several, several years later, in a nearby village, Kushal met a Paramansa of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. After hearing Bhagwan Swaminarayan's glory, Kushal could hardly wait to meet him. Some time later, when he did meet him, it felt like a divine reunion and he yearned to become a sadhu. This was all an act, I can say. However, Bhagwan Swaminarayan first sent him to Varudra to teach in a school as well as preach to people there. Finally, on Kartik Vad 8th, Samat 1864, Bhagwan Swaminarayan initiated him in Gadara, naming him Goparn Swami. He then sent him to Varudra to develop satsang. He was born in the age of 1781 and he got Diksha initiation in 1807. So if we do the math correctly, that's 26 years of age, he actually got initiated as a sadhu. During this period in, early <clears throat> in the early 19th century, many of the pandits resided in Varudra, aff Varudra, affiliated to various schools of philosophy. They resented the appearance of Swaminarayan Sampradaya. As we've learned from the previous lectures, Bhagwan Swaminarayan, due to the extremely fast and rapid, we can say, rise and uh, you can say progress of the Swamiran movement. Many, many pandits, bhavas, other sadhus of other sects really, really despised and hated Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his santos and they used to beat the santos as well. That's how bad it was. Their continual session and created a disturbing melancholy for for followers a learned stalwart was needed to defeat the pandits therefore Bhagwan Swaminarayan sent Goparn Swami to Varudra because Goparn Swami was studied in all of the scriptures so he knew that Bhagwan Swaminarayan knew that in the debate Goparn Swami would be very very adequate to defeat these um, Brahmans and pandits uh, in this duel with his immense immense brilliance combined with yogic powers and saintliness he countered and defeated the pandits he then firmly established and spread the ideals of ekantik dharma among the people ekantik dharma comprises of dharma gnana vairagya and bhakti with an understanding of the greatness and glory of purushottam manifest as bhagwan swaminarayan swami's saintliness and wisdom inspired prominent state officials to enter the fold Maharaja Sahiji Rao Gaikwad II also became a disciple of Bhagwan Swaminarayan to the extent that he invited and honored the honored the latter by a grand elephant procession in the city. After the procession, Sahiji Rao invited him to his Lakshmi Lakshmi Vila, Vila's palace. So, even at that time, great kings acknowledged the supremacy of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Along with that. Overall, the whole, you can say, sun, the group of santos and devotees 
also had a great impression on such kind of uh, dignitary people in society as even this king, Seiji Rao Gaikwad II. So the Samaran Sampradaya was very, very different from others. And it's something that we can acknowledge that we're very fortunate to be inside of it. Nonetheless, to have this Maharaj, this Puja Guruji, these Santos and Bhaktos, what else can we ask for? It's kind of like we sitting, coming and sitting to eat dinner. Our plate is full of different delicacies and nice items. Yet, if we don't take our hands and pick up the food and put it into our mouth, then it's our fault. But if we think about it, Bhagwan, His Ekantik Satpurush, Santo and Bhakto have given us everything. So we're very fortunate. And we should take the lab and opportunity of progressing in satsang day by day and following Bhagwan Swaminarayan's principles and commands from the Vachanamrut and the Shikshapatri. Moving on. Swami's compassionate nature and spiritual realization is reflected by another event. In Saurashtra, Sarangpur is a village on the way from Botad to Gadra. Vagakachar, its Kati chief, was a pious devotee, constantly steeped with problems. Though he wished to serve pilgrims on their way to Gadara, he could not. When he, <coughs> when he saw, when he found out that Swami was coming, he had the murti of Hanmanji sculpted from stone. Then he touched it with this Swami. Then touched it with his stick. As a ritual of Pran Pratishta. This infused such divine powers in the Murti that it began to vibrate. Swami then informed Vagakachar that Anmanji would eradicate evil afflictions such as ghosts, prit, etc., from people and fulfill their mundane desires. This Hanmanji's powers and fame spread all over Saurashtra and Gujarat and even all over India and even the world. This prasang is very, very famous because I can say that <clears throat> in that time, Vagakachar had a very, very, uh, you can say, difficult situation financially. But due to the pratishta of Hanmanji by Gopan Swami, right now it is one of the, you can say, most earning temples in the Swamirayan Sampradaya. Now that is all the pratap, or the you can say the the power of Gopan Swami. If Gopan Swami did not install it, and if someone else did, then the power might be different. But Maharaj himself did his works through such kind of anandi mukto, like our Sadguru Sri Muktanan Swami, Sadguru Sri Gopan Swami, as we just witnessed in this story. So, what is to say that Bhagwan is not pragat? Bhagwan is pragat, Bhagwan is everywhere, Bhagwan is doing everything. It's just a matter of opening up our vision and seeing that He is doing everything, He has always been doing everything, and He will always be doing everything. Because even in the smallest atom, our Puja Guruji says, Bhagwan resides there. And if Bhagwan resides even in the smallest atom, then what is to say that He doesn't reside in His murti? And what is to say that he doesn't reside in other murtis? Bhagwan is everywhere. And it can be seen from this charitra here. One of Swami's important contributions to the Sampradaya was his commentaries on the Vedas, Upanishads, Brahm Sutras, and the Bhagavad Gita. Swami was also a great scholar, as we found out from the Vadodara Prasang. But Swami's life really, really defect, uh, reflected that he was on one side very educated. Nonetheless, he had such kind of saintliness that everyone that met him really admired his character. Swami's life is something to look up to. We may not be able to become like Swami, but we definitely can admire his life. And just by admiring Swami's life, we'll definitely, definitely be able to get something from him. His second and greatest literary, ser literary service was in the compilation of the Vachnamrut. 
along with three other paramahansas, Sadhguru Shri Muktanand Swami, Sadhguru Shri Gopanand Swami, Sadhguru Shri Nityanand Swami, and Sadhguru Shri Shukanand Swami. This is a text of 262 chapters of the Vacharamrit between Bhagwan Swami Narayan and his disciples. This is a very, very famous book that mostly all of you have probably heard of. But we have to think and give props to Sadhguru Shri Gopan Swami for being one of the compilers and catching Bhagwan Swami Narayan's each and every look, movement, comment, and grasping, everything there. This whole Vachnam was uh, occurred from the age uh, from the year 1819 to 1829. Bhagwan Swaminarayan's last 10 years, we can say, 10, 12 years on this earth. Bhagwan Swaminarayan only lived on this earth 49 years, but the works that he did through his Sadguru Santos was amazing. And Bhagwan Swaminarayan has even said that if I come here alone without my Anandi Mukto, no one would ever recognize or realize me, even if I was God. But due to my agents, due to my associates, Sadhguru Shri Muktanand Swami, Sadhguru Shri Gopan Swami, etc., so on and so forth, they are able to highlight and understand and help others understand who Bhagwan Swami Narayan was. And due to that very factor, we now know how Bhagwan Swami Narayan is. He is the Sarvopati, Supreme Lord of Lords, incarnation of all incarnations, all doer, all um, almighty, only supreme one being. There is no one above him. There is no one even similar to him. Everyone is below him. Such kind of knowledge was given through the Vachnamrud, but it was given through the Vachnamrud, but spoken by Bhagwan Swami Narayan. But if these compilers were not there, then how would such kind of words be caught up? So we have to think and we have to definitely give regards to these santos, especially here, um, Goparan Swami, since we are on his, um, on his on this subject. And Swami's birthday is coming up on the 20th. So it'd be very, very good for us to do his pujan on that day. Over here in our Loeda Mandir, we're going to have a big festival regarding regarding his birthday. So that's also something that we can witness. So we are very, very fortunate to have such kind of santos because in the Vatsamrat Bhagwan Swami Narayan says that only God and his sant can grant liberation. Bhagwan Swami Narayan has given the key to liberating souls just to his sadhus, no one else. Because that key is very, very precious and that key is very, very powerful. Liberating from the cycle of life and death is no easy joke. But Bhagwan Swami Narayan lives through his sadhus and works as we as we know from the Vachramar Gadara first chapter twenty seven, Gadara first chapter sixty eight, such kind of Vachramuts nonetheless by developing such kind of affection for the Akantik Satpurush according to the Gadara, 1st chapter 54, the gateway to liberation is open. Nonetheless, Gadara, 1st chapter 58, Bhagwan Swaminarayan says that by understanding such kind of sadhu to be nirdos and free from such kind of blemishes and vices, one self also becomes free from such kind of blemish, blemishes and vices. Nonetheless, in the Vachramrat Karyani second, Bhagwan Swami Narayan says that there is no Bhagwan like this in the whole universe and there is no son like this in the universe. Such kind of statements that Bhagwan Swami Narayan makes for himself, yes, but for his Ekantik Satpurush is something to really, really acknowledge and actually, you can say, etch into our heart because without the Ekantik Satpurush, without his association, without his affection, without us developing affection for him, according to the Vartal 11 chapter, one will not be able to get any kind of realization, may it be of Bhagwan, may it be of one's Atma, or may it be of that of the Satpurush. So such a vital, vital role that is played, and we can even say, according to Sadhguru Shri Gunathya Swami's Vato, Swami says that more value is in of devotees of sadhus 
instead of you can say Bhagwan's at that point until one realizes Bhagwan. Why? Because the the saint will guide one if one is lost on the path of liberation. The saint will tell you that hey, are you doing puja? Hey, are you associating with the Akantik Satpurush? Are you reading scriptures, noble scriptures like the Vachnamrut Swamini Vato, etc., so on and so forth. But we are not able to experience Bhagwan, so there is no way Bhagwan will be able to come and tell us because we don't have that high of a spiritual state. But the sadhu will definitely do that for us. And that's a gift for, from that sadhu to change our life completely. And all we have to do is live up to the expectations of Bhagwan Swami and in such an ekantik satpurush, attain the rajipo and go to Akshardham. There is nothing else left to do. So in the ending, Sadhguru Sri Gopan Swami passed away at the age of 71 and went to Akshardham on Vaishak Vad 4th, Samad 1908, Christ era 1852. Such kind of a sadhu lived <clears throat> for only 71 years, but did such kind of works that we still remember him today, 250 years later. So this divine sampradaya, this religion, this movement is ever growing. And even till this today, Bhagwan Swami Narayan keeps sending his Ekandik Satpurushas Anandi Muktos as we have received our Puja Guruji, who is at that spiritual state and always, always encouraging everyone who meet who he meets to walk on the path of God, to please God and to attain his divine abode, Akshardham. So in the end, we are fortunate and we are very, very, you can say, lucky that we have received this satsang. So now all we have to do is stay in this satsang, worship Bhagwan, associate with the Ekantik Satpurush, serve all of them, and attain Akshardham. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.